Hi, I'm Tracy Gordon. I'm the Register of Wills here in Philadelphia, PA. I'm Sharon Wilson. I'm the solicitor at the Register of Wills in Philadelphia. We're here to watch some videos on the Register React. Ned! It's Robert. We were hunting it. A bull. I should have spent more time with you. Show me how to be a man. I was never meant to be a father. My fault. <laughs> Too much wine. Missed my thrust. And he's been injured by a boar, no, no less. Um, probably something he's done a thousand times. And so it just reminds us that we really don't know how death is coming and when it's coming. We think we do, but we don't. Stinks like death. Don't think I can't smell it. <laughs> I paid the bastard back, Ned. I drove my knife right through his brain. You ask him if I didn't. Ask him. I want the funeral feast to be the biggest the kingdoms ever saw. I leave as the lot of you. I need to talk to Ned. Robert, my sweet. Out, all of you. <laughs> so we watch the king clear everyone from the room. The king is having someone else that he thinks he trusts write down the will, and there are no witnesses. So that's his word on his deathbed, sick, against one witness. And that is just not a proper will. One of the things that's so important is to make sure your agenda is what's put forth, not somebody else's. And you need to recognize the people around you who have an agenda other than yourself. It's obvious the king has gotten sort of lax in this area. So now we're not going to have any witnesses as to what's about to happen next. And if you're in Westeros, maybe you should have a maester. Just a thought. You damned fool. Paper and ink on the table. Write down what I say. When a person makes a will, they should let the heirs know that their attorney, and in the case of the king, the maester, if you all still don't agree on the will, then you will have to uh, take it and appeal it to the common police court. You do not want to uh, make wills when you're sick and, and dying. In the name of Robert, of the House Baratheon, first of, you know how it goes, fill in the damn titles. I hereby command Eddard of House Stark, titles, titles, to serve as Lord Regent and Protector of the Realm upon my death, to rule in my stead until my son Joffrey comes of age. You can always change it, but you want to make your will while you're healthy, of sound mind, and getting sound legal advice. This is no way to make a will. This way the king is doing it will guarantee will be contested. And then they will have to bring it to me at the Registry of Wills, and then I will have to decide whether or not this will was made while he was under distress, or whether or not it's even a valid signature, whether or not there were any witnesses. Doing estate planning on your deathbed, probably not the best time, especially if you're a king and you have people around you who may not have your best interest at heart. That's why it's so important that when you do hire an attorney, you make sure that they are translating your wishes directly into a document that you can read and understand and accurately reflects what you want to happen. We saw Ned do a little tweak. That's why it's important to do your will when you're not on your deathbed, so you actually have the opportunity to look over it and review it and to make sure that it's correct. Give it over. <laughs> the king didn't even read what he was signing. And, and, and this is what I'm talking about. You're sick, so now you're leaving someone else uh, responsible, or you, you believe they're gonna be responsible enough to write down everything you say without even reading the will. This is bad practice. If you notice, the king said specifically his son and he gave a name. 
Ned changed that tweet to the rightful heir. He just invites confusion and vagueness. And we all know what happens when you have vagueness. People fight about interpretation. Now let's talk about rightful heir. When you make a will, you decide who you want your assets to go to. It does not have to go to a rightful heir. If you, if you don't want it to go to your kids or whoever would be your next again, if you didn't have any kids, you also can leave uh, your estate to uh, a charity. I'll give it to the council after I'm dead. At least they'll say I did this right, this one thing. You'll rule now. You'll hate it worse than I did. So in the state of Pennsylvania, the register of wills do not see the will until you die. So you do need to know uh, the rules in the state or the, the jurisdiction of which you live. In Westeros, the best way to record a will might be with the maesters. But back here in Pennsylvania, we prefer that the attorney draft the will and that you store it in a place like a strong box or at the attorney's office. A lot of times we get the question on whether or not they should leave their will in a safe deposit box. And we say no, because the executor won't be able to access the safe deposit box until they probate it. Because they are often locked at your death. That can take time for your executor to prove that they are in fact the authority figure over your will when they don't actually have the will in hand. You want to leave it in a box that's safe that you can lock, um, know where the keys is, and actually make sure someone knows where your will. You want to make a couple copies, but we validate wills by the originals. Now, if you're the king of Westeros, you definitely won't want to leave that will in the Iron Bank. You definitely do not want to leave the will there. Welcome to the Iron Bank. I'll do everything I can to honor your memory. My memory. <laughs> King Robert Baratheon, murdered by a pig. <laughs> Give me something for the pain and let me die. The king asks for something for the pain in order to die. That's something that your heirs need to know about. If there's treatments that you don't want to prolong life, you need to let them know about that. That, of course, would be in something that we call a living will, but those are choices that are better made by you than the people around you. Give the milk of the puppy. Now, you definitely don't want to help somebody die. <laughs> but in the case of the king, if he would have left a living will, like you can leave in the state of Pennsylvania, to say that I don't want to be resuscitated or, you know, I don't want to be on any machines, you can leave a living will. So if you feel like you can't trust your executor and you don't wait till your deathbed, then you can change your executor. People think it has to be family. That's not true. Sometimes people allow their attorney to be the executor. And if you don't like that, there are actually professional organizations, some financially related institutions that will be your executor. Just keep looking until you feel comfortable and satisfied. And remember, you don't have to have one. You can have two, and sometimes that can balance your feelings of distrust of a single person. Whoever you decide that you want to be the executor of will, and that person will be the one that is charged with bringing the will to the register of wills, getting it validated, and then probating the estate, paying all that debt, paying the estate taxes, and then they will be able to get the necessary paperwork to disperse of the assets. The rightful heir of Westeros should be dropped free. He should sit on the Iron Throne. I want to see Joffrey on the throne so people can see what happens when you give too much authority to someone who's not ready for it. That's what television is for, drama. Who do I think should get the, uh, the throne? Daenerys Stormbrun of the House of Targaryen. Cue that dragon montage. Next week, we're watching Lawrence Fishburne talk about gentrification.